All right, gamers and gamers, what is going on? My name is Tanek127, and welcome back to another video. And before we get to today's videos, guys, as always, I want to do my shameless plugins. If you're not, follow me on mixer.com slash Tanek127, where I stream regularly. If you love my videos, you're going to love my streams. And also, I'm doing a giveaway at 500 followers. So make sure you're following me over there. What are you doing? Also, follow me on Twitter at Tanek127 and Instagram at Tanek127. Make sure you are liking this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel for more Bless and Leash content. Let's get right into the video. So, guys, welcome to my beginner's guide for Bless Unleashed. Now, I want to give a big fat disclaimer. Bless Unleashed is a free-to-play MMO RPG, and especially will be free-to-play by the time a lot of you guys see this guide. And um, it's also a games as a service title. It gets upcoming content. It's going to experience changes and stuff like that. So there will be a point in time where this guide becomes obsolete, and I'll probably have to make a new guide. So just a disclaimer and a heads up. And also, this is a beginner's guide, so don't expect any end game tips here. This is strictly stuff to just get you started in the game. And this guide goes for the Xbox One and any other versions of Bless and Leash that come out in the future, like possibilities of PlayStation 4 and PC. But enough wasting your time, let's go ahead and get into the guide. I'm going to start with some simple things such as the menus and just let you guys know what's, um, what's going on here. So matchmaking, this is more than obvious. This is where you're going to come to find your dungeons, instances, and things like that. You have little two-man trials in here. Um, these are all basically um, two-man fights. It's going to be you and a partner versus a boss. Um, you're going to have your five-man dungeons, which are, you know, five-man instances, probably a couple bosses and stuff like that. And then you're also going to have your lairs, which I am guess is a more advanced version of of a dungeon every single dungeon in the game has a gear score requirement your gear score can be found by simply looking in your bag and here at the bottom left hand corner of the screen it'll be your gear score by what you have equipped right now as you guys can see i'm a level 10 crusader with a gear score of 185 your weapons and armor will increase your gear score the better the stuff is, they have their own gear score indicators on them. As you can see, this standard issue shield has a gear score indicator of 12. If I get a gear score indicator of 15, that's going to increase my gear score by 3. It would bring me to, from 185 to 188, and etc., etc., etc. I'm sure you guys understand that. So make sure you're equipping weapons, secondary weapons if it applies to your class, helms, chest, legs, shoes, gloves, shoulders, waist, necklace, and rings. Make sure you're upgrading your gear as often as possible so you're ready for new and upcoming content. Because one other thing about Bless is in the beginning of the game, it holds your hand. But once you get to a certain point, there are even going to be quests that have recommended gear scores on them in certain areas. So you're going to want to make sure you're keeping a heavy eye on your gear. But welcome to the farmstead. This is the area where you're probably going to be starting out, where you're going to be starting out the game. Um, at, right after the tutorial. If you're still in the tutorial, I would recommend just finishing that, enjoying the story cutscenes, and then coming back and taking a look at this a look at this guide. My recommendation for any beginner player, make sure you do every side quest you find in this area. Now, side quests are going to be little indicators on the map. For example, do you guys see how there is that number two on my right-hand corner that says the Blighted Breach? Well, that's a side quest for me right now. That little symbol that's around the two, you'll be seeing symbols like that on the map to indicate side quests. Your main quest is always going to have that blue and white um, unique looking symbol right there. So side quests are going to be brown. Main quests are going to be that blue symbol. So the farmstead, honestly, a lot of people are going to say, you know, just do your quest, go and get out. Wrong. For this area in particular, I honestly recommend hanging out around here until you're roughly level six or seven. And I'm going to show you guys a little something here. There's actually a world boss here in this area. He is known as the Wolf King. And he is a very good farmable fight, especially for um for beginners. He's over around here in this area. Let me just come up on him on him a bit. But yeah, he usually spawns right around right around here now usually um when you see you'll usually see a, a decent amount of players players over here but as you can see you just see a bunch of um wolf king corpses and us uh, speaking of the devil there he is but um 
you'll notice that a lot of people come here and farm this guy often. And let me give you some tips why. Um, number one, he's easy XP. I kid you not. If you want to, you could farm this guy all the way to level 10 or 11. But I just say farm him to level 6 or 7 and then go ahead and head out. But as you guys can see, if you look at some of those players over there, there's people as high as level 11 still running this dude. Number one, he drops two unique pieces of gear. He'll drop a pair of gauntlets for your character that are upgradable and that you can use for a good while in the beginning of the game. And there are also times where he'll drop a pretty decent weapon for you to start out with, at least for the for the Crusader. Now, the other classes, I'm not sure about. I would assume so. He probably drops the um the the same stuff. But um, yeah, hang hang out around this area, do your side quests, and farm the Wolf King for a good while. And also, another good thing about the Wolf King is every time you kill him, and mind you, when you have a decent amount of people here, as long as it's crowded, and there's I'm going to say anywhere between eight to fifteen players. This guy probably only takes about a good 30 or 45 seconds to kill. You'll get anywhere between 700 and 2,000 gold per kill. So that's 700 to 2,000 gold pretty much every 45 seconds. And as y'all can see, he spawns over and over and over again. So yeah, he is definitely a really good farm that you want to take advantage of really early in the game. But anyway, let me go ahead and move you guys over on to the next town. And we're going to talk about some of the some of the other tips I want to give you guys for Bless Unleashed before I let you go. Now, welcome to the city of Karzakor. And I'm hoping I'm saying the name of this city right. A.K.A. Um, the Karzakor Outskirts. This is basically the main hub of the game where you're going to come to pretty much turn in all your main quests after every time you clear a new a new zone in the game. You're usually coming right right back to this place. And this is where a lot you'll see plenty of players here. You'll see every merchant here that you um that you need that you need for everything. But um, before I give you guys you know a little bit more of a look around the town, I'm going to show you guys a few things more in the menu. First and foremost, this is your skill section. Think of every single one of these. Every time you um you come into your skill section. You'll notice that you have skills and you also have a list of blessings. Now, combat blessings, if you could compare them to anything, I want you to just think of them as your subclass. It's a it's a it's a different form of your class that takes on, you know, like different responsibilities, different moves and stuff like that. Now, granted, Bless Unleashed kind of works like um like Black Desert Online. Pretty much everybody in here is a DPS. Every class is capable of holding their own, etc., etc., etc. Yes, the Crusader and the Priest give off that tank and healer kind of vibe, but more so, both of these classes are actually more of supports than um than anything. But um these subclasses, as you guys can see, for example, I have the Gift of Valor, Mark of the Wolf, Lionheart Legacy, Crescent Moon, Nightwind Storm Chaser, and Centurion's Command. Command. Each one of these give my class a little bit of a different play style. Now, as you unlock all these, I would just say pick the one that's best for you that you're the most comfortable, that you're the most comfortable with. But you're going to unlock all these as you progress through the game. Alter. Anytime you want to change your blessing, just pray at that altar again, and you'll be able to swap blessings there. Now, keep in mind, you won't be able to put your um, skill points into that class until you swap to that blessing. So make sure if you want to start working on a different blessing, make sure you're swapped to that before you um before you start going going running out and farming again doing quests or you know whatever whatever it is that you're doing this is your um quest log of our pretty much um explain how quest works to you guys as you can see campaign quests they have the blue the blue symbol and side quests they all have the they all have the brown the brown symbol this is your trials your trials and titles section pretty self explanatory this is your um your campaign section. If you've played um if you've played Neverwinter, then you'll be a little bit familiar familiar um with with this section. The only difference with this one is um it's going to give you all kinds of certain all kinds of uh, rewards and stuff like that for um for completing these these certain objectives and quests and things. You're not going to get you know like boons and things to um to to level up to level up your class. If you wanna, if you wanna join a guild, if you wanna look at guilds that are currently on the game or learn anything about them, if you hit their select button, 
then the guild, your guild information is right here. As you guys can see, I'm already part of a guild, but if you're not in a guild, it's going to ask you, you know, to search for a guild. Um, the option to create a guild is actually right here in the city. This is your party menu, basically where you invite your friends and everything like that. Once you unlock your in-game house or estate, that'll be available. That'll be available for you. World map, really don't have to explain that. That's pretty, that's um, pretty self-explanatory. And matchmaking, as I showed y'all earlier, how dungeons, PvP, and all that stuff were in the game. They're all right here in matchmaking. Now, um, on this symbol, you're going to see this little um, mailbox icon. The only time you can check your mail is at these mailboxes. And usually you'll have, a, um, anytime you have mail, you'll have a little mailbox symbol um, right, ne right next to where that, um, that inventory bag is, right next to your, your mini-map. As you guys can see, I have a bunch of um, old checked check mail already but this is where you're going to check your mail there'll be so now that we're here you guys are going to notice that we have plenty of merchants all around all around the city we have the cloth armor merchant um we have the leather armor we have enchantment specialist um master common we have weapon smiths it's pretty self-explanatory with all these merchants and um everything they sell food vendors food in here and cooking and all that stuff that'll um That'll apply apply buffs to you. Also, uh, help you heal when um when you're out of combat. For the most part, there probably are some that can help and heal you during combat. But I'm at the beginning of the game and I haven't seen those yet, so I'm not going to completely rule out that possibility. But um here at the soul at the soul pyres, you can pretty much um sit here and heal. They kind of work like a bonfire in Dark Souls. Fully fully heals you. Um gets you. Get to, you know, all, all prepared. You can cook here. You can actually share your meals with other players to give them buffs too, and it'll be shared to, you know, anybody else who comes comes here to these um to these soul pyres. But um I do want to teach you guys a bit about crafting real quick because crafting is an important element in this game. So when you craft, you can actually increase your your gear score or item level, whatever you like to refer it to, without um buying new weapons and armor or earning new weapons and armor. Now, me personally, here's what I honestly recommend. Um, I recommend you always check your new dungeons, trials, and um, and matchmaking things you got available here in um, here in this area because um, these always are going to give you special loot boxes that have more gear that's usually suitable for around the level that they recommend. So I would always um, every few levels or so, I would always come back here and check your dungeon list. To see what new instances you can do. And also you can always farm them over and over. For um, chances at better loot too. But um. What we, what we what you do here is. You enhance. You enhance your weapons. Your weapons and armor. Now I'm going to give you guys an example right here. Here on this shield. You'll see it has a defense of 209. A gear score of 12. And it's fortification level is none. You guys see those five bars right there. Well. That is um that that's the level I want to get max up before I bring the gear to the next to the next tier. Now, as you guys can see, this shield is a is green rarity, so you're pretty much well aware how that's going to how, how that's going to work. You guys know these color codes by now when it comes to gear loot and stuff like that. If you've played any battle royale or looter shooter, you should be familiar with it. But if not, I'll give you the rundown just in case. Gray is common. Green is uncommon, blue, blue is, um, blue is rare, purple is, you know, usually, um, better quality, legendary, epic, or some sometimes, but the, the follow that the quality after purple in this game, I believe it's either yellow or orange, and I'm not sure if it's epic, legendary, or what exactly it's called, because unfortunately I haven't got that gear yet, but basically, the higher the color code, the better. So you have gray, green, blue, purple, yellow. Yellow being the highest tier. Now, if I hold A to fortify, and it'll tell me the items I need here on the bottom right-hand corner to fortify this um this piece of gear. As you guys can see, it cost me two point four thousand gold and seventeen and seventy sorry seventy of those stones. And as you guys can see, I have one thousand. 
698 of them. So after fortifying that, it's going to not only increase the stats of it, but it's also going to increase the gear score of the item, meaning my overall gear score went up by one. Now, if I continue to fortify this and actually just fill up this whole bar, I'll show you guys what happens here. I'll have the option if I get an equipment upgrade stone that matches the tier that I want to make this gear. And as you guys can see, it'll be going to the blue tier next. I have an option to bring this gear piece up to a blue rarity. And then after the blue, I'll do the same thing, raise this fortification level five times and stuff like that. But as you do this more and more, the cost is going to increase. It's going to cost more gold. It's going to cost you more stones. The, um, the upgrade stones are going to cost you more, etc., etc., etc. As You guys know how the MMO grind works. It's going to cost you more and more materials the higher you go. Now, my recommendation personally for new players, I wouldn't recommend, honestly, crafting anything higher than green or blue. I would honestly, you know, just let your equipment stones and, and that kind of stuff. I would honestly save that stuff and build up a lot of those stones that hang up to them for gear that you're going to get up at end game stuff that you know you're really going to need to upgrade and that you're going to want to bring up to that blue purple and yellow rarity and stuff like that me personally i'm not a fan of um of upgrading early gear but to each his own you know if you like um having the best of the best at, at all times by all means go ahead and um and upgrade that stuff but to my opinion i would just i would just wait and as you guys but anyway guys that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for my bless unleash beginners guide I really hope this guide helped you. If there's any Bless Unleashed um, players or, you know, people that know a little bit more out there and if you feel like I missed anything, do feel free to help your fellow players by leaving it down in the comments below and also giving me any tips and suggestions that you think I may not know as well. But if you all enjoyed this video, smash that thumbs up button for me. And I want to thank you all so much for watching. It's your boy, Tanek127. And please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Till next time, peace out. Take care. So can I get some closure? Stay right where you are and don't go closer If you haven't picked it up, it's all